Hello and welcome to the 2017 African Regional Conference in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. I'm joined this afternoon by Regina Aguiare, who is the Chief Executive of Soronco Solutions. Regina, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, you took part in the opening panel of uh, this year's conference this morning, looking at uh, financing for the future, looking at Africa's long-term economic developments. And one of the questions that was uh, discussed there was issues around sort of economic diversification and whether markets in Africa are really uh, taking the steps necessary to diversify their economic models away from perhaps natural resources into, into more diversified sectors. Um, looking at the continent today, are you encouraged by what you see? I wouldn't say like, I'm too encouraged. So I've seen a couple of bright spots, but once again, we still have a long way to go. Um, we're still heavy, heavily reliant on certain industries and even using technology as sort of um, a booster within diversification, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done first for people to understand on the continent that these are the different spaces and I think some of the industry players are also risk averse so it's happening but it's happening slower so I'm um, I'm hoping that you know um, more people within the stakeholder economy will understand that they need to diversify, they need to innovate, you know, they need to use technology to help them sort of leapfrog all the um, infrastructure gaps and all of that, and to really bring more economic wealth into the continent, they have to diversify. And is the money finding its way to these more diversified sectors? That's a good question. You know, um, so there's always the middleman. <laughs> factor you know and um, the money probably will get stuck but not really at the grassroots level where real change is happening or not really at the people that are really making a difference so sometimes you know I think that the money if it either comes to government you know then they they have different priorities and they're looking at different things and um, and the conversation is not really happening but if it comes down you know to private sector and if we have that public private sector partnership we can really move the conversation of diversity diversification forward and we can really see, see real change without that you know it probably gets stuck within the government and then they are like um, um, doing all this bureaucracy um, and if it doesn't come into the hands of entrepreneurs or the private sector who can really drive change then we won't see much happening okay now also it's important at a grassroots level to change um, education structures and and the focus of education as well across the continent and you work uh, closely in a few markets on STEM education, don't you? Uh, how is that progressing and how important is that to this whole discourse around economic growth and diversification? So um, our educational system has done us a great disservice as a people on the African continent because it has focused merely on passing exams or roots memorization. So we're lacking skills in critical thinking and problem solving and that's the challenge. This is why we're heavily reliant on international aid or the government because um, young people are not taught how to critical think. Now, when it comes to STEM, that's exactly what it does. It teaches you how to critical think and problem solve. And it's about time that we have, you know, Africans taking the future in their own hands, you know, and being able to solve their own problems. And for that, they need skills. We've talked a lot about how Africa has a youthful population. If these young people don't have the 21st century skills that they need to succeed, there's going to be a problem, you know. And STEM is great because it teaches all those different skills and it's solving, you know, challenges that are present today. So these are important issues, obviously education, um, meeting, uh, you know, future labour demand and so on. This is really crucial to, to the growth of the continent. Um, taking the longer term view here, we've seen in the last couple of years Africa has, has suffered somewhat with the commodity price slowdown. Um, are, you, are you still positive about the future for Africa? So I am a cap half full optimist. <laughs> you know, I'm always positive about the future for Africa, especially since um, I'm seeing that a lot of young people are really waking up to the fact that the future is now, you know, that narrative that we keep hearing about you are the future leaders, the future is today. And also um, I'm seeing that the, there's a lot of change within the ecosystem, especially with the boom in fintech, um, with mobile money, um, also with, you know, educators now also starting to think about STEM and in some cases STEAM, adding the creative arts. So I'm very optimistic that with all the initiatives that are happening, you know, I think our biggest challenge is to collaborate. So there are all these wonderful things, but they are working in silos. So it's really hard to move the needle when it comes to change. So I think one of the big conversations that we should start having is as a continent, how do we come together? And it's by coming together that we can really make the big pushes. Okay, harmonization and cooperation is key. Regina, thank you so much for your time. Hi, thank you. Thank you.